Welcome to Tim's Vital Confessions, everyone. I'm Tim Durling, and I have a special guest on this episode, Mr. Ryan Murphy of Rush Fans on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube, and uh, the guy who's uh, been gracious enough to invite me in on many of Rush Fans Roundtable. We do the deep dive. It's been a great way for uh, for me to get introduced to a bunch of Rush fans that I wouldn't otherwise have met. So uh, I've been on lots of Ryan's episodes. This is the first time that Ryan's been a guest on Tim's Final Confession. So welcome. Thank you, Tim, for having me. Thank you. It's it's always a blast talking Rush. And uh, yes, thank you for having me. I can't wait to do this. So on this episode, uh, it's a topic that I haven't yet discussed. Uh, I've alluded to it, but. Um, I thought Ryan would be the perfect person to talk to about Rush's home video releases. Uh, anything that was released back in the day on VHS and yes, in some cases beta, uh, or then in uh, DVD and of course eventually Blu-ray. Anything that was meant for a home video release. So um, I think between the two of us, we had a lot of the same things. So we're going to basically discuss these more or less in the order that they came out. Um, Ryan's got some notes. I've got a few notes written down. So we're going to get started with actually something that came out in 2010. So it's not really first chronologically, but based on the material covered, it is. Uh, it makes sense to talk about it here. And it is the um, Rush classic albums. And I believe uh, Ryan's got it on Blu-ray. I haven't got any Blu-rays, but it's the same content. Classic albums is a series uh, done by Evil Vision. In the UK, I've got a lot of uh, videos in this collection. I've got Fleetwood Mac, Deep Purple, Metallica, Def Leppard. Uh, they do a great job talking about a classic album. Most of the time they do one album per show, but on this one they doubled up and they did Rush's two biggest selling albums, 2112, 76, then they jump ahead to 81 for Moving Pictures. And if you've never seen this before, I think you can see clips of it on YouTube, but basically they in all cases that they can do, they reunite the musicians with the original producer, in this case, Terry Brown. And they talk about the, uh, what led up to the album and how the songs came together. And so Ryan, you've mentioned that this isn't one that you've spent a lot of time with, but what were your overall thoughts of watching this particular release? Yeah. I, I couldn't tell you the last time I watched this one in particular, but, um, runtime is 112 minutes so it's not too long in terms of um you know i guess a blu-ray or a movie um this was cool though this, i mean i'll be the first person to tell you that uh i think these are two of course classic albums and phenomenal albums they're just not two of my favorite rush albums um i wouldn't even put either one of these in the top 10 uh, my personal favorites is probably kind of you know rile up some rush fans um but no i thought this was cool i i loved how um, you know, I mean, you can even see on the back cover here, Getty and Alex, uh, they've got their bass and, and acoustic guitar respectively. And, uh, yeah. And, and Neil's in front of a drum kit. Um, so they're kind of playing along with, um, you know, some of the, some of the music on the, on the, on these records in this documentary and talking about it and talking about how certain things came to be, um, you know, there's some footage from the studio where moving pictures was recorded in this. Um, this is a cool documentary. If I mean, I would assume if you're a diehard Rush fan, you're probably familiar enough with these two albums. But it's it was definitely worth the watch. You know, it. Um, it, it was informative. I mean, you're not going to if you're a hardcore Rush fan, there's not going to be much in here that you're going to that you're not going to know already. But it's a good place to start if um, if you're a new Rush fan because it outlines you know their two biggest selling albums and uh, you know it, it you kind of get to know the guys a little bit too which is cool so good good release really cool yeah I uh, it's also got almost an hour's worth of bonus material that wouldn't have appeared I, I'm assuming that when this originally it originally aired uh, in the UK. But it's got bonus material, and I actually learned quite a few things about the bonus from the bonus material. Like Neil talking about some of his favorite lyricists. Like I would necessarily have thought that uh, Paul Simon and Joni Mitchell would have been people that would have influenced Neil, but 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 lyrically they did. And yeah, they they actually play along with some of the songs. They've got 
you know, the ability to break down the songs into individual parts. You know, here's just the bass line. Here's the rhythm guitar. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite parts is when Terry and Getty and Alex are sitting at the board and they play what the original version of, of Tom Sawyer was, which was yeah. way faster, like just way, way faster. And, you know, Terry Brown says, admittedly, we're so used to hearing the finished product that this sounds strange to us. But when you hear Getty sing, it's too fast. The lyrics don't penetrate the way that they would. Like songs kind of live in their own tempo. And these guys understood that. So it's interesting to hear what might have been or what would have been or, you know, what what started. And I, you know, what started some of these classic songs. And yeah, you know, I agree with you that it as a Rush fan, it would be cool to have one of these on every single album. I would love you know, to see more releases like this. We kind of we kind of do get one with one of their later albums. We'll talk about that. We'll get to that. Uh, but yeah, it would have been cool if we'd have seen, you know, them them do this. I'd like to see them sit down with Peter Collins and do one on the albums he produced and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so, so forth. But so that's uh, that's where we're going to start. The, the first official uh, home video that came out and music videos as far as uh, full length ones, were kind of a new concept. I know that in the late 70s, there were some. I know that Alice Cooper put one out in the late 70s. But the first one that came out from Rush was in 1981. And it was a companion video to Exit Stage Left, their second live album. I believe Ryan has that to show us. Yeah. And, Pretty awesome uh, cover art, too. Con you know, yeah. containing all the album. I don't know if you were going to touch on that, but you've got oh, I uh, love I the love Fly By Night love Owl. Yeah. Know, the I feel the King's King, I guess Th this guy's from uh, Hemispheres, Hemispheres yeah. Permanent Waves. And then on the back, well, OK, maybe it's not on the back of this, but it's on the back of the uh, it's on the back of the inside cover. The yeah. naked guy from Hemispheres, you got the necromancer from Caressa Steel. You got the two guys from Moving Pictures. So and the original awesome Rush stuff. logo is on the road case, the logo from the first album. Oh yeah, it is. So they, yeah, that's down here. That's the one of my favorite uh, gatefold albums because of that. I, like that was uh, quite brilliant. The crown, yeah, and uh, that's the same model Paula Turnbull that was on the cover of uh, uh, Permanent Waves. They you signed Tractor down again. Now I had this on VHS. Now not from back in the day. I actually bought it off eBay. I think in the early two thousands, and uh, I don't have my VHS tapes anymore. But. Um, it was something that I'd always wanted to see because I'd all, I've seen clips from it. Now, one thing I will say about this, it's awesome to have this, this early footage of the band from such a prime period in their career. But, Brian, would you say it's a bit short? Yes. Uh, DVD-wise, yes. Um, I mean, here's your, here's your track listing. There's only, what, uh, 10, 10, 11 songs on here? I, I will tell you... <clears throat> One of the cons about this is this is missing the spirit of radio. I don't know if you can see that, uh, the, the track listing, but this is missing the spirit of radio, La Villa Strangiato, Beneath, Between, and Behind, Jacob's Ladder, and Brune's Bane, which were all on the CD. So, like, the material's there. It's just not visible. And I, I, I don't know. I Now, I just have the DVD. I don't have this on Blu-ray. I don't even know if this is on Blu-ray or not, but maybe there's – footage of it out there i don't know but it's kind of surprising to me that you know the spirit of radio and la villa Strangiato at least weren't on here you know i mean they they put you know the bitor and the snow dog in the end in the mood in 2112 medley on here instead um for some reason yyz is listed here twice that's kind of odd you got yyz here and yyz here i don't know if that's like recorded At the from end the credits i think it, the studio version plays during the end credits okay okay and also there's i think there's not much of why we said on there there's neil talking it comes on in the middle of it it's it's early days of home video one there's a few things i find strange about that you bring up a lot of good points first of all why was it limelight on the album it was one of well, their biggest yeah. hits and it's right. not on the exit stage left album right um but see, those, the Exit Stage Left album is comprised of, of shows from different places. I know there's Glasgow and there's, but uh, what you get there is the show that was filmed in Montreal on the uh, Moving Pictures Tour. And some of that's on the Exit Stage Left album. Yeah. And, and obviously that's not a full length Rush concert. So I don't know why they didn't just film the whole concert, but 
for whatever reason, um, that's how it came out. It was better than nothing. But uh, yeah, it, that could have been better. But it's pretty hard to argue with the material that is there. Um, one, one of my favorite performances that is on both the album and the video is Xanadu. I it's mean, it's Xanadu. pretty hard to top that the live version of Xanadu. So, mm-hmm. so that's actually stage left. Now, you may think, why aren't you showing yours, Tim? It's coming. Um, in the mid-80s, Rush put out or, uh, you know, the record company or whatever put out a home video compilation called Through the Camera Eye, which I think had eight of Rush's videos on it. I, I've never had that, but I think uh, somewhere or another, I've got all the videos that were on that. And um, those are all on YouTube. I just wanted to mention that that came out. Another thing that came out in, um, I think it didn't come out till 1986, was the Grace Under Pressure home video. Now, this one's unique because I think this is the only one that didn't come with an album at, at the time. CD it, wise, right. Yeah. yeah, it only came out on, on home video. And uh, I believe when the um, when it first came out on VHS and it would have still been on Betamax at this point, it also included the video for The Big Money, which was kind of unheard of at the time. This is the concert that honestly I'm all that aware or familiar with because I don't ever remember seeing it back in the day. As a matter of fact, uh, all I really knew from it was Red Sector A because the video clip that Much Music would play of Red Sector A comes directly from this concert, which I think... Um, Speaking of which, see how that has a has quotes around the A in Red Sector A? Yes. Right there? Yeah. That's not how it... That's... I think a misprint. Um, I've never seen that anywhere else other than on the back of this, which I thought was odd. I figured it oh, was worth okay. telling. Now, the, it's funny. The only time I ever saw a clip of this was in the early 90s. And it's also the only time I ever saw someone playing a laser disc. Now, laser discs, for those of you that, that don't know, they, they were that was a format that never really uh, took off. I know it had some people that liked it and... Um, there, it was certainly high quality, but it just never really took off in, in the, the market the way that home video did. One of the big reasons is that you couldn't record on them. They were simply for watching, but I, I obviously it did come out on Laserdisc. So it, it, I, I didn't get that until much, much later. What are your thoughts on the, this, this particular snapshot of the band from the 1984 era? So this is probably, other than maybe some of the later year stuff because I was actually there. Of course, I'm a younger Rush fan. Um, this is probably my favorite DVD. Um, I don't know how controversial that is, but uh, I know a lot of people do love this. You've got the Fear trilogy in terms of the three songs that were out at the time. Of course, now it's a trilogy with four songs. Um, but the enemy within the weapon and witch hunt all on this. And that was the last time that was ever done. And I think this is the last time the enemy within and the weapon, both were ever done live on tour. I don't think they were ever done again, which is a shame because they're both fantastic songs. Um, I mean, there are some things I don't like about this. The camera cuts are really quick. If you go back and watch it, it's, it's like all over the place and it's really hard to follow. The lighting is really bad on this. It's almost like there's too much light all the time. Um, but other than that, I mean, the setless structure, fantastic. It starts with the Spirit of Radio, which, is, in my opinion, is probably their best opening song for for a concert. Um, it, it's got you know the the Count Floyd intro for the Weapon. I I mean, you I go crazy for that. That's that's so great. I quote that all the time. Um, yeah, the howling and. <laughs> And he goes, look at that guy dancing. He's scary, too. And Alex is like rolling around on the floor. Um, this is this is really good. Uh, I mean, it's exit stage left is better, but this I like this probably the most um, in term. Well, exit stage left in terms of quality and everything is, is better. But um, sound quality in this is good, you know, for 1984. Uh, it's overall just really cool. And I mean, of course, the 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 album artwork too um, is is pretty awesome with the the egg in the in the clamp the C clamp yeah yeah if you're a fan of the Grace Under Pressure era they do a lot of the album on here yeah the enemy within this and early warning Red Sector A 
well, three of eight. But I think oh. in the I think on this tour they did everything. I'm pretty sure yeah. every everything was done. Yeah, it's a little condensed too, but yeah, it's it's quite good. Uh, like I said, I've not watched it as much as the other ones because it just kind of slipped by me. Oh, there's so one the other next... thing I wanted to say on this. If <laughs> another funny part of this, if you go back and watch this during the Enemy Within, when Getty sings. Um, suspicious looking stranger flashes you a dangerous grin he's going like this with his eyes it's all it always just you have to go back and watch it it always uh it always made me laugh it was always kind of an inside joke with one of my buddies who i forced to watch rush movies with um but when i was younger but yeah it, it's 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 really cool and now it's out, out on cd as well so um definitely check it out yeah. yeah they eventually put it out as a standalone cd which is a cool thing another thing about that is that there's a Getty screws up the end of uh, New World Man in the singing. If in the last okay. chorus is like, you know, instead of he's a new world, he goes, he's a new world. Like he just came in too late. Mm, yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's another song that they didn't play live for, I think, until uh, the Vapor Trails tour, which is crazy because it was their only top 40 hit in the States. I don't think I ever saw New World Man live. No, I, I mean, I only saw them once. They didn't do it on the R30 tour. But. I don't think so, they, yeah. So moving on, the next, the next thing to come out, and the first thing to come out new on my radar as a Rush fan, because I was into the band at this point, was A Show of Hands, which uh, came out in early 1989. There you go. Uh, and um, the, uh, this one, I think, is a little bit closer to the actual album track listing. I think there's, uh, some, I think there's it's some songs close. on the video that weren't on because I know yeah. like Tom Sawyer's on the video and the medley of uh, 2112 and Villa Strangiato and In the Mood. That's mm -hmm. not on the album, but a lot of the songs are. Um, I do remember I, I had this on VHS as well. One thing that was cool that wasn't on the album that I had hadn't seen before was them doing Territories. So yes. since I don't have the show of hands the way that you have it, I have a question for you. Okay. Does that happen to have lock and key on it? Um, no, it doesn't. Lock and key. Wait a second. I wrote it down that it does for some reason. Um, It's got prime yeah. mover. It's got turn the page. No, it doesn't have lock and key on there. And the I don't think I a CD that. even has that. No. And, and the reason I ask that is because lock and key is on the video or the, uh, the laser disc version of a show of hands. They yes. put it on there. Yeah. And um, like, you can look it up on YouTube. If you type in rush show of hands, lock and key, you can see it. It's like a quality that's ripped from the laser disc onto, onto YouTube. But, I really thought when they put these out on, on DVD and Blu-ray form or whatever, that they'd put that in there too, but they didn't. I was a little surprised by that. They did. Now, show of hands, of course, I remember that well, because I, I remember even, I bought the album when it first came out. That was actually the very first Rush album I bought as a brand new fan within a week of it coming out. But a few months later, uh, because I think it was a few months before the video came out, CBC television in Canada played an hour long version of that on like a Thursday night. And it was unusual because Rush weren't, you know, they weren't the type of band to get like mainstream coverage like that. So I remember making a point to set my VCR for that. And I watched, <laughs> I watched that over and over and over again. Sure. Uh, and of course it wasn't complete, but it was complete enough so that I knew that there were, there was different stuff on there than, uh, than just on the album. So I have, I have fond memories of it. It's not one that I've watched in quite a while. What are your thoughts on a show of hands? This also has the A in quotes on Red Sector A. I didn't notice that until <laughs> right now. That's really weird. Um, I'm a big synth era guy. So this is really, this is good. Um, I mean, you it starts off with the big money marathon. I'm a huge Power Windows guy too. Uh, you got the big money marathon and territories on here and Manhattan Project. Um, it's got mission that's always great live they, of course getty's got his uh late 80s raccoon hair in this which is always yeah. awesome to me yeah um raccoon hat hairstyle but this is missing subdivisions witch hunt 
and distant early warning, which were on the CD. Yeah. So again, I mean, you're talking, you know, there's differences between oh, well, all three of these. Um, you're talking, I would, just, I would assume it's just time constraints, but there was differences in terms, they condensed it. Um, and that's, uh, that's always a con for me, you know, because it's, you know, more rushes always Never good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, really cool album art as well on this. I mean, I, I'm not really sure what the thinking was behind it, but it's, it's pretty cool. Um, it's very yeah, stylized it's, art. Yes. It's yeah. It's very eighties too, I think. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it sounds good too for, for when, you know, this was recorded. So I, I, I like a show of hands, especially, especially marathon on a show of hands. Really good. Yeah. Really, really good stuff. Yeah, the, the live version of Marathon, actually, I remember they, they released as a single and a video, so that I got a little bit of taste of okay. uh, what it was like as soon as it came out. Um, yeah, if you're, not, if you're not a fan of Power Windows and Hold Your Fire, you're not likely not to like it because it leans heavily on that period. Um, the next thing to come out was in 1990. Um, they put it out on, on, you know, on audio form, but also home video form, Chronicles, which is a a collection of their video clips and this this dvd version is from uh 2001 now uh the i think that the two cd set of chronicles is probably still to this day the best way to get somebody in like the for the casual person that wants to get into rush i would say listen to chronicles okay now, i would not say the same thing for this video collection because uh it's only um, it's only about 63 minutes long. It's got uh, starts with closer to the heart. So they go in order. It's close to the heart, the trees, limelight, Tom Sawyer, Red Barchetta, subdivisions, distant early warning, red sector A with no quotes on this. The big money, <laughs> mythic rhythms, time stand still, lock and key. Now, those were all pretty commonly played videos, <clears throat> even closer to the heart. <clears throat> the trees wasn't. The trees wasn't. And those hemispheres videos are unique because uh, they're not the same versions as uh, the album. They aren't the studio versions. They were actually played live as they filmed them. So those are kind of cool. Uh, but this also contained the Enemy Within and After Image. Now, After Image was never released in North America to MTV or Much Music. It's a very strange video. It was filmed in the UK, and um, it's got a very different look to it. It was originally on that Through the Camera Eye Home video I would mentioned. But there are so many other videos that they have that they could have put on here and and uh like videotapes held a lot i don't know why they didn't make it two hours they could have put they could have gone all the way back to fly by night and anthem i mean countdown's not on here body electric's not on here uh you know Zana do farewell to kings isn't on here lime uh, no limelight is on here it's just missing a lot and and it could have been better so I picked this up used. I didn't have the VHS back in the day. Also to go with this, technically the very first DVD I ever had came in 2003 when uh, Mercury put this compilation of the Spirit of Radio because I bought, I must have bought it when it first came out because it came with this bonus DVD, which was advertising the Chronicles DVD. And it's, it's got five videos on here. So it's got Closer to the Heart, Tom Sawyer, Subdivisions, The Big Money and Mystic Rhythms. And um, it's also got the lyrics to all the songs that were on the Spirit of Radio compilation. So that was kind of neat. So I next, thought I had that. I was looking for it, but I don't. I know I have it someplace. Of course, it's not with the rest of my stuff. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> so it was just kind of an aside. So um, the next thing I have is the first official Rush DVD that came out. Um, originally, they were planning on doing a DVD, I think, from different stages. Yes. Uh, they shot footage. Uh, also obviously, we know what happened. Yeah, yeah. And, but, of course, we all know what happened at the conclusion of the Test for Echo Tour, so that yeah, shell. What we did get was, I still think, one of the best DVD packages ever is uh, Russian yeah. Rio. Okay. 2003, this came out. And this was a must for me. I asked, you know, this was a Christmas present. I got this on the uh, CD and the DVD version. And I 
think this is a fantastic concert DVD. And I love the documentary on it, The Boys in Brazil. I, I, that sheds a lot of light on, you know, the logistics of getting the tour down there and how, you know, the, the film the last night and it almost didn't happen because it rained. Because it rained, um, yeah. The other thing that was cool is this has got Easter eggs on it. If you, you know, if you took your remote and you put two, one, one, two in, all of a sudden Anthem appeared on the menu. So you could watch the, the original 1975 uh, video for Anthem, which I had only found out existed about a year before this. So this is a really, really exciting uh, <laughs> thing to come out. And the band sounds so good. Um, you know, they hold, they, you know, they, they really went to town with you, Simon, went to town with the whole dragon motif, oh, yeah. pushed them in Brazil. So, uh, you know, here he is up on top of the mountain. The set list, I mean, you know, the set list is so, it covers so many of their eras. I mean, you know, I really don't see how anybody could watch this, even if they weren't a fan of, like, say, modern. Uh, more modern rush if you were a, you know a long time fan i don't see how you could watch this and not think wow this just really really good your thoughts on rush and rio well first thing i will say the a in red sector a does not have quotes but the they've got free will as two words well, i know this is kind of you know minimalistic and nitpicking but they got free will listed as two words um which i've seen prior but you know it's cool that they did an outdoor venue like this. Um, I mean, if you look at, I'll take the CD out and the, and the booklet out, you can see literally this is the whole venue. Um, of course, the CD tray is reflecting off my screen here a little bit. But yeah. um, this is, it's, it's a really cool change of pace from what, you know, they were doing with the stuff prior, which of course is goes back to a show of hands and what 1988, I think a show of hands. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm probably in the minority here in that this is not one of my favorite live movies. Um, for whatever reason, I just don't enjoy this big outdoor venue version of rush. I no, the documentary that goes along with it is, is awesome uh, and really cool to see, but, I don't know. This, this just doesn't do it for me for some reason. Um, I mean, I'll still put it on from time to time and you're right. It does have a lot of diversity in terms of, um, you know, it goes back to all the way back to by and the snow dog and, and working man and um, 2112. But um, the, the trees is on here too. It's just, I don't know. It's just one that I never got into maybe because at the same time that I had this, I also, had bought in the grace under pressure live um and that one just clicked more than this one for me but another thing this is also missing between sun and moon and vital signs which are on the cd, CD. yeah those are both really good yeah. um they were on the cd and not on this um i think those 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 ones were actually recorded in montreal so maybe they just didn't have footage of them oh that's possible yeah that's certainly possible I don't know. I just feel like the, the, the picture quality, maybe it's just because this is a DVD and not, I don't know if this is out on blue or not, but I feel like the picture quality from this is really like, is not much better than something that came out, you know, 14 years prior. So that's a kind of a complaint of mine too, but it's good. It's just not one of my favorites. The, um, I believe there was a, D or a Blu-ray package that came out. I think they just called it R40, and it collected all of the previous ones that were on DVD. I don't have it, but to, to answer your question, it is on Blu-ray, but I don't know if you can buy it by itself on Blu-ray. The next thing to come out is um, a, a pretty exciting thing for me because it's the one tour that I saw them on, uh, not the show. For some reason, they never they didn't record the show in their hometown of Toronto, in which case I would have been in the audience. But uh, they recorded <laughs> it in. Um, where did they record this? I should know right off the top of my head. Uh, Frankfurt, wasn't it? Frankfurt. Yeah, Frankfurt, Germany. Yeah, I know it was Frankfurt because yeah. uh, at the beginning of Animate, Getty goes, hello, Frankfurt. Frankfurt. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. R30. Of course, this is what the tour book looks like. You can see behind me, I've got an advertisement mm -hmm. for it. Um, 
Yeah. Is that this, a tour poster you know, from your area, by the way? I never asked you that. No, it's not a tour poster. It's, it, it, it came from a, a radio station and it's just like a it's about this thick and it's made to, on the back of it. It's oh. framed, so it's made to hang up. And I had my eye on it. And then when they were getting rid of stuff, I'm like, can I take that home? And they said, yeah. So I was quite happy to, to grab that. That's pretty um, cool. So this is, um, so even though it's a different show than I saw, it's the same set list. So it starts off with the R30 Overture, which I just, you know, I have the fondest memories of seeing that. It was the only time I ever saw a Russian concert. Dream come true. You know, my favorite band. Here they come out, opening riff to Finding My Way. And they go through in order from each album until they finally reach moving picture or uh, permanent waves. Then they play the spirit of radio proper. And like you said, pretty hard to beat that as an opener for a rush concert. I know they've moved it around. It hasn't always been the opener, but this is a good set list too. Uh, I know some people don't like the feedback album. I really didn't have a problem with it besides the fact that I didn't really think the world needed another version of summertime blues, but in all <laughs> honesty, songs like the seeker, I wasn't all that familiar with because I'm not really, I'm not into the who. So that was yeah. kind of a new song to me. I like the version of crossroads. I like the way that they did heart full of soul acoustically. And what I remember about that, I think it just became a thing when uh, Getty and Alice would sit down to play it. Uh, the crowd would fill in the, Oh, 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 oh like with right. He's in the Yardbirds version, but rush didn't do, but, we just kind of locked into it. Good set list, though. I mean, they did Force 10. Um, they did Force 10 in 2004, you know. I remember when they when they started to do Xanadu, I was just like, you know, and they came up with the double necks. That yeah. was such a, you know, a magical, magical moment. And this, you know, in, in true Rush fashion, it, it's got more to it than, uh, than just that. I'm just looking inside the booklet here. So the book, this has a lot of the same pictures that are inside the tour book because that's the one rush tour book I do have because I got that there. Uh, first time yeah, I was ever on rush fans, I talked about the fact that I had to buy the tour book twice because of something that happened at the venue with the yep. lax security. But anyway, um, it's cool. But the, but, but the, the second DVD on here has got some really cool stuff. It's got to, uh, Interviews going all the way back to 1979, so 81, 90, 94, and 2002, which is Getty and Alex talking about uh, the Vapor Trails album. And yours is I a was, two-parter? Yours, is, yours has two DVDs in there? Yeah. Yeah. Not mine. No. Oh. That's interesting. Mine's way different. Oh. <laughs> Look at the difference of the back. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay, so... So yeah, DVD two. It's got all. It's got five different interview clips. Well, this is and a Blu-ray, actually. Okay. Well, the two thousand two interview is really interesting to me because they shot that inside the Anthem Records offices in Toronto. I was in that room. I was in that very room that Getty and Alex are in. That was pretty cool. Like two years later, and then there's something called the Anthem Vault, and I really, really like this. This has the video for Fly by Night on it. It's got uh, a couple of uh, really old MPEGs from Don Kirshner's rock concert of them doing Finding My Way and In the Mood. Um, so it's got the videos for Circumstances, La Villa Strangato, Fear of the Kings, Xanadu. Um, basically, it's kind of filling in the blanks that, that the videos that weren't on the Chronicles. Not all of them, but a lot of them. It's got a cool uh, sound check version of Spirit of Radio. It's got Free Will when they did the, uh, the SARS concert in Toronto in 2003. Yeah. Um, and it's got some Easter eggs on here, which I'll be a spoiler alert. They're just longer versions of some of the interviews, but uh, worth picking up. And it sounds like you need to find yourself a DVD version just to get the. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The oh, no, part. actually, I have that. Hold on one second. Yeah. OK. Run over we're gonna, here. We're going we're to pretend to pause here. I'm just going to talk. Keep talking and take. No, 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 no. I do have it. I do have it. I do have it. I left cool. it over there on accident. So I'm going to have to put this in because yeah, I, uh, yeah, I definitely have it. Um, yeah, I forgot all about it. I have both. Um, but I, I was just going to say, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and watch this, but I, this was when I was first getting into rush in 2007 ish, I'll make this quick. Um, 2007 ish. Um, of course, I didn't see Snakes and Arrows live because I wasn't enough into the band during that tour. But I had, I had DVR'd this, which was you know the 
I guess you can still DVR these days, but I, I don't DVR anymore, but I DVR this from the Palladia channel, which is just a channel. I don't yeah. know if, where that channel is now, but it was a channel where uh, uh, they played concerts, you, you know, from all sorts of uh, eras, but R30, I had DVR this. So this was the first time I actually saw the band live, like, in a. this is the, like, so, so essentially the first concert that I saw. And I just remember, I remember like, falling asleep during subdivisions which is my favorite song which is weird i know that's a negative falling asleep during rush but and like waking up during the next song like earthshine and and just seeing that guitar solo and i just fell in love with the band because of that um that being said of course this holds kind of a special place in my heart because it was the first you know concert footage i saw of rush but you've got like you mentioned, Tim, you've got The Seeker, you've got Heart Full of Soul, Summertime Blues, and Crossroads. That's four songs from Feedback. I, of course, I didn't see this this show live. You did. Um, but I, not for me. No, Feedback is cool. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to bash Feedback. But seeing those four songs live on this, to me, is just a waste. If they did like one, like if they kept Heartful of Soul and did that acoustically with Resist, which Resist acoustically on R30 is awesome, by the way. But, you know, this is R30. This is 30 years of Rush. You could have put in some songs that were never played live on this. There's no presto on this. You could have put in available light on here or something like that. That, I mean, um, I don't think there's any power windows on here. Oh, no, Mystic Rhythms. But you could have threw something in here like, a motion detector that was never done live or, or losing it could have been done live on our 30, you know, songs that weren't played live or songs that weren't played live in forever would have been, you know, chemistry, something like that. Red lenses yeah. pulled some of these songs out in place of some of these feedback songs. Uh, that's my only complaint about our 30. I think it's beautifully shot in terms of camera cuts. So smooth, so perfect. Um, this is my intro to Rush, at least live. But uh, yeah, that's my only complaint is the feedback stuff on there. One of the other highlights for me of, of the concert, the Toronto concert, was when they did Between the Wheels. Yes. Um, I just thought that was, uh, I've always loved that song. It was the first time I ever heard it live. Well, only time I ever heard it live, but I never knew them to do it in concert before. So the next one thing I want to talk about, you, uh, you. You, you mentioned, um, so you've already talked about uh, Exit Stage Left, The Grace Under Pressure Tour, and A Show of Hands. I've got those all here on this collection that came out in 2006 called Replay Times Three. Uh, it's actually Times Four. This includes DVDs of Exit Stage Left, Grace Under Pressure Tour, A Show of Hands, and the CD of The Grace Under Pressure Tour. So oh, okay. um, this, was, this is why I don't have those VHS anymore. I've, but what I really love about this, other than getting the footage all in one place, is I love the fact that it came with miniature tour books, like miniature versions of the tour books from Moving Pictures, Grace Under Pressure, and Hold Your Fire. Um, I thought that was a really nice touch. Um, but yeah, that, that came out uh, 2006, so that kind of brought me up to speed on the, on the live stuff. Next thing... Um, to talk about came out in 2007 we alluded to this this is the only thing i've got in a format called mvi which um was like music video interactive or something of course this is snakes and arrows it came out in uh, 2007 but this version has um it's weird because it actually doesn't have a cd with it it's uh made to be played on a computer so it's got the album in, in um it's a 5.1 or I don't know. It's got the al It's got the full album on here, but it's also got a really good documentary called Snakes and Arrows. Uh, game of called? Snakes and Arrows. The game of Snakes and Arrows. The game of Snakes and Arrows, yeah. The, which is, uh, you can watch it on YouTube. The whole thing's on YouTube, but it's a really good documentary of making the album. I actually like this alternate cover that's inside of it. Um, almost better than the actual album art. We covered that on our Snakes and Arrows yeah. deep dive yeah. because the, yeah. the uh, Hindu... Uh, oh, the Leela. artist or the yeah. I I think I think he was Hindu artist. Yeah. The painting was from a from a um a, a artist, uh, Indian I think Indian painter um, Harish Johari actually I believe was his name. Um, but Neil wanted that, and Hugh Syme did that. Uh, what you just yeah. held up, and 
you know, a little rush trivia there for you. And Hugh Syme puts that, um, that Snakes and Arrows version on all of his, any, any collages yeah. or anything that he yeah. does. That's how, yeah. that's how he, here's the Snakes and Arrows cover. <clears throat> yeah. Like it's, 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 it's cool. I've come yeah. to appreciate Neil's thought with this, but yeah, Hugh Symes is definitely cooler. I mean, you know, the customer's always right. Yeah. You know? And, and <laughs> yeah. the customer's Neil Beard, you do what he, you know. Um, yep. I like the, uh, I love, I mean, we've talked about this on the Snakes and Arrows Deep Dive. Um, I love some of the, the, the pictures from me, some of this Far Cry one that's yeah. very short. But yeah, it, it shows a lot of insight. And it was a good album to document because it's the first one they did with Nick Rasky Lennitz. Yep. And he made such a great album, like a good sounding pair of final albums for them. I wish they'd have done it for Clockwork Angels too. I, I but, wish they did this for a lot of records. You know, one like Counterparts would have been cool if they did that for. But I just want to say the Game, and Snakes, the Game of Snakes and Arrows documentary is fantastic. I like this more. Then the first thing we talked about, the 21 Tell Moving Pictures documentary, this is, this made, well, helped Snakes and Arrows really grow on me. Snakes and Arrows is one of my favorite records now at this point. Um, the only complaint I have about the game of Snakes and Arrows is it doesn't cover all the songs. It covers about half right. the record. Um, but it's really cool to see, you know, uh, that it was a studio in the Catskills in New York, not too far from me where they recorded this uh well a couple hours from me south but um you know just the way they shot that and and how they're they're basically showing the band in the studio as they're producing some of the stuff and uh really cool insight really cool documentary uh fantastic it's yeah. only like 45 minutes too so <laughs> i would definitely recommend i love i love how they talked about the making of uh, putting a malignant narcissism together yeah. how alec wasn't there yeah, uh, and um, and I, I one of my favorite parts. I love it when we see the guys uh, having fun. Yes. Um, so I like it when Andrew McNaughton's got them out taking photos. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what happens. I have a guess, but I'm not sure. But something happens. The three of them crack up, and Getty's got the best laugh. Like it's just he's just cackling, and it's just it's he just took a best. selfie. He said he goes, "Let's yeah, take said, the, album the album shot, shot. now." Yeah. And he goes, he takes his phone out and. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then they're looking. Yeah, you're right. Then they're looking at it. Yeah, 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 yep. yeah, yeah. It's it's really great. Um, highly recommended. Even if you just bought the Snakes and Arrows album, you didn't get that version of it. You can look it up on YouTube. It's a good companion. And yep. and like you said, um, if Snakes and Arrows wasn't something that bowled you over the first time you heard it, watch the documentary. Watch yeah, and then mm -hmm. listen to the album again. Yes. Yep. So further to that, on that tour, <clears throat> this is when they started basically doing an album alive dvd an yeah. album a live dvd right and i remember when this came out i was a little bit eh, and this is going to sound so stupid but all of their previous live things that they put out they gave it its own name this is just snakes and arrows live yeah and i remember thinking really you, you couldn't give it a, a a cool name like if they'd have done that then all the world's a stage would have been twenty one twelve live and exit stage left would have been moving pictures live but anyway um True. Continuing the artwork theme with the sign on it. Um, this is, um, this might, you know, this might offend some Rush fans. It's, there's always a chance we can offend, we can, we, we as Rush fans can offend other Rush fans just by stating our opinion. Yep. I'm going to go on record to say this is the last tour that I think that Getty sang really, really well. That's just my opinion. I, I, I think that. I don't mean it was all over after this. I just mean, I think he sang really, really well on this one. And after that, results may vary. Um, but <laughs> I, wrote, gonna... I wrote, Getty's voice starts to go downhill here. <laughs> well, okay. only because Where like was they think, tuned you know down what? during circumstances, right? I think. Yeah, they do. And I was glad to see that on here. Circumstances is like the whole Hemispheres album is so high. So it, yeah, I won't begrudge them to do fair. that. But I remember at the beginning of Mission, because Mission is it's so bare with just the synth and the vocal. That's when sure. I started to notice it. But I think overall, he pulls it together quite well. I remember writing a review of this for um, a website I used to contribute to called 80s Metal Server. And I called Dreamline the set wins the set list survivor award because that song is just they just hung in there. Um, this is another great set list. They do yeah. Entre Doom, uh, 
they do, uh, of course, they do a fair bit of, you know, snakes and They do Digital Man, again. Digital like Man. Said, yeah, Circumstances, Between the Wheels again. Uh, Natural Secret Science. Touch, which is cool. See? Yeah. Well, they did that yeah. on R30. I th- or no, no, I'm sorry. They did that. They, they, did, they did do it on R30 as well. It is on is R30. R30. No, it's on... Yeah. Uh, no, it's on uh, Rio, I think. They, they did it on both tours. Maybe I'm blind. Anyways. Yeah, they did do it. They, they oh, did yeah. it on both tours. Oh, uh, well, that's... Well, circling back really quick, it's on this. Secret Touch is on the Blu-ray, but it's not on the DVD. Hold on. I've only got the DVD. I swear I saw Secret Touch written on it. I must have been thinking of... I must it's, on, it's on R30. Yeah, it's on the Blu-ray. Oh, that's weird. But it's not okay. on the... Interesting. Anyways. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they do a lot of Snakes and Arrows on here. And and when you go see the bands do, you know, in support of a new album, you want to hear a lot of the new album. I do. So they do the main monkey business, the larger bowl. More on that later. Um, Far Cry, of course. Working them angels, armor and sword, spindrift, the way the wind blows. Hope. Um Malignant Narcissism, which went yep. into Neil Solo. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, the Encore, One Little Victory, Passes to Bangkok at YYZ. That's pretty cool. There's also some extras. Oh, Atlanta, The Authorized Bootlegs, Ghost of a Chance, which is cool. Red Red Shadow of the Trees, 2112 Temples of Syrinx. And um, Alex on the, um, the little... Uh, the menu. Remember, he's the green man. Yeah, comes on. He's and he's like, see his head like what? A, what a he's <laughs> like speaking in in like like an Indian accent or something, right? And he's something like that. Yeah. This was this um, was filmed in Rotterdam. You had mentioned Rotterdam earlier. Yeah, I knew Rotterdam. Um, they they made it a point to play there different times. And this is interesting yeah. too. So this is two thousand eight. Check this out. A little foreshadowing. A little bit of steampunk going on. Yeah. That was the shapes. picture for working them angels, right? Yeah, yeah. But shapes the things to come. Also, my version—I mean, yours might have too—came with a little ad for Retrospective Three. Well, that—that's what I was hold that up again. That's what I was talking about. Um, yeah, I don't have that in mind. Maybe, maybe I did. I must have thrown it out. But um, see on the far left, that's Hugh Simon Snakes and Arrows work, and yeah. that image is Snakes and Arrows, uh, or that that image is from Retrospective. So Hugh yeah. Simon put. His artwork on that is instead of the one Neil. There's a little, he, the little teeny tiny passive aggressive, but not. Really. Yes, yeah, in a very yeah. in a very polite Canadian way. <laughs> I just wanted to say about this. Yeah, this is a fantastic set list. Um, opens with Limelight, which is cool, which I always thought was good. Opens with Alex plays the opening the opening riff and then pauses, and he's like, and he looks back and he's like waiting for like Getty to come on stage. He's like Getty didn't. Um, Mrs. Q or, Mrs. Q or something. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of interesting. It's kind of funny. Couldn't find his and, couldn't find and, his shoes. Yeah, and Alex is just like laughing, and then, um, the beginning of Natural Science. Getty's got the camera out, and he's taking videos of all the. I think yeah, that was yeah, that was snakes and arrows, and uh, he's taking videos of all the all the uh, venues that they're at, and uh, everyone was wondering like, what's what's this? What's the purpose of this? And then he, it ends up they show all of them at the beginning of natural science. And he says, you know, back home in Canada, we say that's beauty. eh?" and this is now natural science. eh?" that's what he says when he uh, introduces natural science in this, but they play, they want the last thing I wanted to mention was in the making of, or the game of snakes and arrows uh, DVD. I can't remember if it was Getty, Alex or Neil who said it, but one of them says, the music in, on Snakes and Arrows, the songs on Snakes and Arrows were meant to be played live to take on a new life of their own. They play all but three songs from the record. They they don't yeah. play uh, Bravest Face, Good News First, or We Hold On. They play yeah. everything else, and Snakes and Arrows has 13 songs on it. So they play 10 of 13 songs from this record on this tour, which I happen to love. I think it's every single one of these songs sounds exactly, you know, assuming what they intended, that they would be uh you know take on a new life live and and i think they did i think it, it this is fantastic this is so and still good. plenty of room for classics too it's not like they left right. out a lot of classics that's true yeah that's that's very true i mean there's not much 70s but there's circumstances and i think that's it 
the tree. Well, the trees. Oh no, Bangkok. Uh, Bangkok, but yeah. that's it. But the I Jerry Stiller talk. intro too. Nah, they never play. Bangkok. Nah, nah, they never do Bangkok. I can't say it without saying that. But uh, Jerry Stiller now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so to go along, sort of with the snakes and arrows and the larger bowl. Anybody remembers the larger bowl tour? It opened up with an intro by these two hose heads. Bob and Doug McKenzie. <laughs> I just wanted to throw this in. This is Bob and Doug McKenzie's 2-4 anniversary. Eh? Uh, this came out in um, 2007. And, of course, I mean, most I don't need to tell Brush fans this, but most people know Getty Lee. First of all, Getty Lee went to school with Rick Moranis. Uh, so he's known him for a long, long time. And they started Bob and Doug McKenzie on SCTV, same place Count Floyd came from. And uh, Getty guested on Take Off the single from their Great White North album, which did actually way better than anybody would have assumed. And uh, Getty is on this DVD. He comes out and sits with the guys and talks for a bit, but they also interview him. Uh, I'm assuming at his home. It looks like a similar footage to on the next thing we're going to talk about. Yeah. But he talks about how in certain circles, he's more known for his singing on Take Off than anything else he's done in his career. So forget the gold, the, the multi-platinum, gold platinum albums with Brush. Oh, you're the guy that sings on Take Off. Yeah. He I wish was the that was, there was more to that. That's, that is, his performance on that is so good. I wish there was yeah. more, like that was, I know it was like a full song, but he only sang like two lines. And uh, yeah, you know, he also did the uh, other, uh, uh, what was the other one called? The, oh God. Uh, he did some group setting. Tears are not enough is what it's called. Um, yes. Remember that? Yeah, for the Northern Lights. That, that was, yeah. North, you're right. North, it was called that Northern was Lights. Power Windows it era. Was, it, that was uh, 85. That was the Canadian uh, version of We Are the World or Do They Know It's Christmas. That's when the, the app, that, and the Northern Lights song is actually on the We Are the World album. Um, and it's got, it's, you know, the song was written by Brian Adams and Jim Balance. And it's, so it's got Brian Adams and, and, and Gordon Lightfoot and Ann Murray and Mike Reno from Loverboy and, you know, but yeah, you're right in, in, um, on the background vocals, it's got people that aren't necessarily singers. So it's got John Candy, uh, uh Dan Aykroyd, like just Canadian celebrities. I think there's a hockey team singing. I don't know if it's the Canadians or somebody, somebody, <laughs> that I don't there's know. a whole bunch of people singing back and Getty sings a line in, in tears, not enough. And it's cool. It's really yeah. cool. As a matter of fact, now that I think about it, that would have been the first time I ever heard Getty sing. And I didn't know who he was. Oh, really? Cause that That's was before, cause as we talked about on the, on the, our um, rush roots, first song I ever heard by rush was the big money. This would have been the same mm -hmm. year, but earlier that year. So sure. anyway, I picked this up. Getty's on it. Um, it's just kind of interesting. And, and you, I, and for a while, you could find this at Walmart dirt cheap. So I just wanted to put that in there. It's not a Rush release, but it's Rush related. Now, the next thing to come out, I think, I think you and I would have the same thing, was the big one, in my opinion, in uh, 2010, Beyond oh, the Lighted Stage. I'm looking at, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, a year later yeah. for you. Yeah, Beyond yeah. the Lighted Stage. This is um, basically... The, the official Rush movie. It's about their career. Yeah. And I remember hearing about this and hearing about this. Couldn't wait to buy it. Do you have the metal version of the... No, I have the paper one. Yeah. Okay. Or I think I got mine. Board. I ordered mine as soon as it came up. It's got this stupid uh, thing on the back where it's got some glue and the glue is coming oh, off. Yeah. But on the very back of it, you see it's got the star, man. Yeah, this is actually a steel canister. That's um, pretty cool. And... Um, I, you know, I'm sure people have their quibbles and things that they would have done different about this. I have none. This, to me, I don't know what more a Rush fan could have hoped for. Uh, it's done by the Banger Films guys. They always do a great job. And they, they got such amazing early footage of the band. I mean, they've got, not only have they got early footage of them performing with John Rutsey, by the way, one of the songs is Best I Can, which was hot, which didn't end up on an album until Fly By Night. All right. But they've got narration from the late John Rutsey because he had a lot to do with the early part of their career as not just their original drummer, but he was like their spokesperson. He introduced the band on stage. 
Um, I, I just, I love this, this, this film. I've seen it, I don't know how many times. It does such a great job going through their career. If you combine it with the bonus footage that's on here, some of my favorite footage ever is the three guys at that hunting plate, the hunting lodge, oh, yeah. eating and drinking and joking around. And you just get to see the fact that these are three guys that happen to be three successful musicians. But these are also three old friends who've been through thick and thin and they still like being in each other's company. I, I get such a big kick out of that. Um, you got to love how Getty... Getty gives them fridge magnets. Yes. And yes. Alex like shoves it in. He's like a tiny little guitar. And he like shoves it in his yeah. mouth. And, and like the whole time, I, Alex and Getty are playing back and forth. And, and Neil's just sitting there laughing the whole time. And it's so good. It's so funny. I like it when uh, speaking of that, the guitar, he, he puts it on his knife. And he's like, pass me the... Uh, <laughs> Or he tries to put it on the, the water, the water pitcher, the glass yeah. water pitcher falls off. And Neil, quick witted as he was, goes, hey, that's fake glass. And Alex is like, yeah, this is not lead glass. And, yeah. you know, it's just <laughs> it, it just it reminds me of me and a couple of my old friends, the way we would just goof around. Everybody Movie else thinks those yeah. guys are idiots. But no, mm -hmm. we're just really enjoying being together. Yep. And uh, and really not, hardly once did they ever mention the fact that they're in a band together. About right. the only time that they do is when uh, Getty starts teasing Alex about, apparently Alex wrote a song called Time, which yeah, I've oh never yeah. heard of. I haven't and, he, and the lyrics are like, time blinds my eyes with light. And he's teasing Alex about it. And, and I'm guessing Alex must have been out of it when he wrote this particular song and uh, <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't make a recording session. I'd love to hear it, but... Um, yeah, no, it's basically, you know, to this day, somebody that wanted to know, you know, what's this band all about? I would say, well, watch Beyond the Light of Stage. Yeah, this is this is really good. I mean, the only the only complaint I have about this is it doesn't cover. Well, I watched this like a month ago. Maybe it does cover it minimally, but like from. I don't know, power windows through like test for echo like it doesn't it it, it kind of skips really quick through that there's not much on you know hold your fire presto roll the bones counterparts counterparts which is i think one of their best albums um it doesn't cover much of that so i kind of wish there was a little bit more on that but in terms of you know kind of doing a retrospective throughout their entire career yeah this this is the one and isn't it weird that we that there's two people in this dvd that we can say are our friends now donna halper and martin popoff isn't it like crazy yeah yeah that's yeah you know what i mean like i remember like my wife is emphatically not a rush fan you know she likes a lot of music, but she actually sat down and watched this and i think she gained an appreciation for the fact that you know they're respectful guys and right. they you know they have a sense of family uh, but i but when we first did the first deep dive with, with Donna, I remember saying, do you remember the lady talk, that talked about, you know, she was a DJ in Cleveland and she kind of, she said, yeah, I said, we're going to talk to her. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's for, never lost for 20 on me episodes. Cool. <laughs> it's never lost on me. How cool that is. Right. Uh, right. So um, the other thing I, I wish they had talked about a little bit more, they do go into depth about how they decided to stop working with Terry Brown. But yes. they never talk. And I asked Martin Popoff about this when I interviewed him about, um, well, I interviewed him about the third book in his Rush trilogy, but I went back and I said, I got a question about the 80s. You never hear tell of Peter Henderson. You never see any interview uh, clips with Peter Henderson talking about grace under pressure. Mm -hmm. And I just, it's kind of strange that he's just kind of forgotten about. But yeah, they do kind of skip from, say, they skip from signals to power windows. They talk about that. And then the next thing they're talking to Kevin Shirley about uh, engineering counterparts. Now there is some, um, there is a little bit about roll the bones on the bonus footage, but I think that's more to do with the song itself. Yeah. If I recall correctly. So yeah. It's okay, hard maybe I missed everything. that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's yeah. hard. It's hard to catch everything, but those early albums, each one was such a step in their career that it oh, made totally. sense that they, that they talked about each one. Totally. So the next thing is something that you held up and I don't actually have, I only have it on CD. And uh, so yeah, Time Machine, 2011. 
this one hand in hand with Beyond the Lighted Stage, really kind of the tour that you know followed. Because Beyond the Lighted Stage came out, what did you say, 2010? 2010. Yeah. Yeah. So the Time Machine tour kicked off in 2010 and went through 2011. And this is yeah. 30th anniversary of moving pictures, right? So yeah. You, they play that in, in its entirety. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. First time the camera eye and and uh witch hunt and vital signs got much but especially camera eye. Yeah. That, I mean and now you saw this tour, right? This is we're getting into <laughs> situation where you saw most of these we're, right? we're getting yeah the the next three i i also i saw this twice um uh, my very first rush show was was this in 2010 at uh spac saratoga performing arts center in, in saratoga new york saratoga springs new york and uh yeah funny story that the intro the the real history of rash with the, where they where they they have like the spoof band called rash and they're they're doing all sorts of different versions of the spirit of radio and then alex is like or whatever you do don't press this button and he hits the button on the filter and then they play the spirit of radio like in that video and my buddy and i we heard that as we're walking in because we got there kind of late and we yes. just booked it for our seats we're like oh crap we're gonna miss the band <laughs> They're like yeah but it was just that and and uh but no i mean the second time that i saw this tour was in in new york city at madison square garden and when they played the camera eye as you can imagine when getty sings an angular mass of New Yorkers and chase through the streets of Manhattan. Yeah. yeah. I get chills just thinking about it. Like I, the place erupted, like so cool to see. Now, the only complaint I have about this is um, playing BU2B and Caravan. Now, don't get me wrong. It's cool that they released the material first on, as singles. And, you know, it's cool that they're trying it out live. But again, like with the feedback stuff, like I said prior, you know, you could have put other songs in its place and saved these for, you know, the tour upcoming when they toured Clockwork Angels. But um, pres Presto live on this, so good. Awesome. So yeah. good. Uh, Leave That Thing Alone was so good on this. I always loved the, what I call the big three at the end of the first set, Free Will Marathon Subdivisions. Those just fit so perfectly together, those three in a row. Which yeah. also on this free will is two words again. I don't, I don't. Yeah, know why. that's, that's I, interesting. But um, you yeah, know, the, yeah, you're right. Those three songs do fit together. So almost like you'd almost think that it come from the same album. They work so well together. Yeah, they work they really well together. Time together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and the encore in this man, La Villa Strangiato into the into the little reggae at the beginning of Working Man, and and that. So and the guitar solo and working man in this, oh my gosh, this, this tour and this DVD, you know, so good. And we have a couple, couple friends that were there too, uh, in Cleveland where yeah, they recorded right. this. So mm -hmm. really um, good stuff. And we should also talk about with every one of these home video releases, there's some funny stuff. Like if there's a tour video that they played on tour, you, you can watch those in the special features. They usually do throw something else in. Sometimes they have famous people doing it too. This, um, yeah, oh, here's it. I always thought this was cool that the inside artwork on this is really cool. Um, and it's a little bit of, a little bit of foreshadowing with this. Uh, Again? Yeah, that's twice they've done that now. Uh, but yeah, the, the, I think we have to talk about the, yeah, the intro video, the, the real history of Rash and, you know, in, in Gershon's house of sausage with Slobovich and that's hysterical. And then uh, opening the second set where, uh, you know, Getty's the, the director and Neil's behind the camera and, and Alex is Ray Daniels in a fat suit and he comes running out and, and ladies stop moving pictures. And it's at, like drinks, like, you know, pictures of beer or water or whatever it was. And, and which was, and then they, then they go right into, moving pictures the album but this is this is top notch this is this is this is really good this is other than like you mentioned getty's voice this is really well put together set list in my opinion and um you know one of my favorites for sure yeah i gotta get that i i only have the the cd version of that the next thing um is clockwork angels tour 
And the funny story behind this, this is the one thing I ever bought at a Target store because a few years ago, Target came up into Canada and attempted to get a foothold the way they do in the States and it didn't last very long. I'm not sure what happened. But the one time I bought something at Target is when they had everything marked down and they were closing. And this was one of the <laughs> things that I said, oh, I don't have that. I'll buy that. Um, of course, the Clockwork Angels tour was significant because uh, they had the Clockwork Angels string ensemble doing um, mostly doing a lot of the songs on Clockwork Angels, but also Red Sector A, which you may notice does not have quotations. That is so strange. Usually these guys are very consistent with it anyway oh, and why was this um but i remember it's funny i was i was watching this one this morning and set one they do big money grand designs territories you must have been losing your mind <laughs> well like three that, songs from power <laughs> that's why i saw this tour three times <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah and subdivisions they open with subdivisions that's my favorite song of all time yeah. i'm a big synth era guy so yeah, subdivisions, the big money, Force Ten, Grand Designs, the Body Electric, Territories, and the Analog Kid, and they they rotated out Middletown Dreams and Manhattan Project in there. Well, no, actually, Manhattan well, yeah, Project the rotated. Yeah, in that's there. right. The bon they're on the bonus. So, so five songs, like over half of uh, Power Windows. You're the Power I Windows guy. I saw every <laughs> single one of those. Yeah, because I like I said, I saw them three different times. I saw them. Uh, um, in Uncasville, Connecticut. I saw them in uh, Newark, New Jersey at Prudential Center. And I saw them at uh, Saratoga Performing Arts Center again. But all the rotating tracks I was able to see, fortunately, because I saw three different, That's uh, so three cool. different times. Yes. And the That's Analog so Kid cool. solo in this, man, that that's yeah. up there in terms of the pop that uh, the camera I got in New York City. The, the solo and the analog kid on this DVD. And of course, when I saw them live, but on this DVD uh, is up there with, uh, you know, the biggest roars of the crowd that I've seen personally live. So um, yeah. And again, with like what they did with snakes and arrows, they played every song from clockwork angels, except for BU2B and BU2B2 on this tour, I believe. Yeah. And I've gained, I, I like, clockwork angels more now than i did when it first came out so this is just awesome this is an awesome companion piece to it oh 100 this is this is again getty's voice is it's slowing down but what i mean for his age and and for you know i think he did fine a lot of people like to criticize it i think it was fine of course it's not perfect it's not it's not 1980s or 1970s getty lee but it's it's you know, it's funny. It's I don't bill. like I don't like to criticize it, but I feel the need to point it out because I don't want anybody to think, well, you're just one of those Rush fans that accepts everything. No, I notice things. Right. Um, but 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 the thing is, if you take Getty's vocals aside, all three of them as musicians, they've never been better. And Getty as a bass player only got better. Mm -hmm. And as a yep. front man moving around the stage only yep. got better. Yep. So. And if you put it on and you're singing along with it, you can overlook, you know, a, a lot of, but yeah, again, the set list, I mean, you know, um, I love the fact that they just, they, they said, we're really serious about this clockwork angels thing. We're going to play pretty much the whole album. Um, and then, you know, they tie it up with, you know, uh, Lots of complaints about that too. At least, well, I, you know, being the there in the, the yeah, bounce. being there in the crowd, I mean, People were complaining that they're like, oh, here comes new Rush stuff. Time for a bathroom break type of thing. I'm like, well, go take yourself a long bathroom break because here comes, you know, 45 minutes of new yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't get it. One. Clockwork yeah. Angels is, is a top five Rush album. Like, yeah, you know, it's, it's really good. And, and they did all of it live. And yeah. Yeah. for those guys that just wanted to hear the old songs, the Time Machine tour was the tour for you. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yep. Like, yep. never let it be said they didn't do a tour. That was, you know, just directed to what, well, oh, which brings us to the next thing. And this is a big one. R40 oh, yeah. Live. Yeah. Um, yep. This, um, you know, again, you know, the vocals aside. You got the big I one? I wish I could have seen this. I really wish I could have seen them one more time. Uh, I didn't. I got but, the thick one. Do you have the thick one? No, mine's 
just the standard. Okay, so mine's got CD, disc one, disc two, disc three, a bonus, and it's Blu-ray. So it's it's got all oh, in oh, one. It's okay. like a it's like a package yeah. deal. I've got I've got the, the CD version, and then I've got the, the the three CD version, and I've got the DVD version. So don't think I'm missing anything. But the way that they did this was just everything about it was so brilliant from the changing of uh, instruments to the gradual stripping down of the stage to finally ending up in um, what did they call it? Eugene Levy, Mel's tap, Mel's Mel's rock pile. Yeah. And I mean, Lakeside park, <laughs> they're doing Lakeside park. Like, you know, um, I love the fact that they did um, how it is on here. We talked yes. about that on our, on our Vapor Trails deep dive episode. All I'm going to say is with Ben May. Tim, are you going to uh, Cinema Strangiato this week? I know this, you know, I don't know when this episode of, of your show is going to air, but uh, I don't know that it's playing anywhere around here. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm, I'm going. I didn't see it in 2019 uh when it came out for the first time um, no, but i am going i am going this thursday uh all i'm gonna say i'm gonna do it on record now they better show how it is because one of my favorite songs and i love it live on this like like you said um first time it was done live on this tour uh i'm gonna be very disappointed if how it is isn't, isn't done on cinema strangiato so we'll see we'll have to come back to that now but, it, I mean, I understand it was a long show. It would have been nice if they'd have somehow been able to do something from every album. Yeah. Because they skipped Test Echo. They, they skipped uh, Presto, Hold Your Fire, Hold your Power, fire Windows. Power Windows. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. uh, but now having said that, they're very generous on the previous tour for Power Windows. Yes, yes. Um, Hold Your Fire just gets the shaft. It does. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, this is very, very cool. I mean, you know, it ends up, you know, they're, with their vintage equipment to playing in this very small place and doing this early stuff. Lakeside Park Anthem, what you're doing and working, man. Um, you know, it's it's bittersweet, but at the same time, it was very cool. And um, losing it too, yeah. losing it. We got to touch on that. You know, they did yeah. it. I think a total of six times. Um, some with Ben Mink and some with Jonathan Dinklage and. Uh, yeah. I was fortunate enough to have seen Losing It Live in New Jersey. The one time I saw this tour uh, was in New Jersey in 2015, and I was fortunate enough to have seen Losing It. And it was – I'm not a huge fan of Losing It, um, to be honest with you, but seeing that live was a treat. Um, really cool. Yeah, it's funny because they – you know, Rush – you know, for, I'm up here in Canada. They, they, I, I'm in the Atlantic provinces, so I'm in the eastern part of Canada. And they did come here on the Clockwork Angels tour in 2013, but I and they played um, Halifax, Nova Scotia. Halifax, yeah, which is yeah. about six six hours away from where I am. I uh, but oh, okay. At the, yeah, it, it, it's quite a ways. And also, I didn't have anyone that I could have gone with. It like I didn't at the time. I didn't have enough Rush fans that were serious enough Rush fans that lived handy enough to me. You want to know how much of a small world this is? I took a cruise. Uh, big money yes cruise. you were saying that um i took a cruise to st john new brunswick which is yeah. where you're from or you're from new brunswick yeah I'm, and uh, that's about that's about two two and a half hours away from me okay i took a cruise to there it was a cruise to canada when i graduated high school uh no when i graduated two years of college i did two years of college uh community college and then went to four-year school but um yeah uh my mother took me on a cruise st john new brunswick and halifax and i remember it vividly i walked into something we were touring some museum or whatever and there was a clockwork angels tour poster encased in glass or i would have taken it and you know yeah. with me um advertising a show for halifax in like i don't know a couple weeks or i don't know it was end of june we went on the cruise i think it was a, i think it was a month i think it was uh, in july but uh man i would have went with you had i known you in 2013 <laughs> it, yeah I it's know. just so it's cool that, yeah i wish i had been able to take that's that the last course. that's the last time they came anywhere close to yeah okay to here because it's kind of weird because they toured canada like any other u.s band would yeah they played in play montreal toronto right. vancouver you know anyway i got to see them once now the last thing i've got came out in i think it came out 20 
16 into 2016 and it's time yeah, stand <laughs> still um man this is good i really liked it but it's really taken on of course when neil passed away it took on such a new meaning yeah um, like totally new meaning here we have the time theme again on the disc itself this is um it's a good companion piece to be on the lighted stage, I think, because it kind of brings up the speed. Um, well, it's an excellent companion piece to our 40 because it chronicles that tour. Um, it's and, even got uh, the time as 2112 or 912 as the front of the Clockwork Angels album is yeah. for those that I don't think aware. they dare show a clock without that. Even inside <laughs> of Hold Your Fire, if you look in the street scene inside Hold Your Fire, there's a clock at 912. Oh, it's, really? It's, it's, oh, it's, I've it's, seen that before. Yeah. It's way in the background. Uh, I have read that somewhere. I wouldn't have picked that up myself. Uh, it's narrated it's by Paul It's also Neil's Ryan. birthday, too. Yeah. Sorry to that's cut you off crazy. there. But yeah. That's crazy. I didn't September 12th. Uh, um, and uh, it's narrated by Paul Rudd, which makes sense because he and Jason Siegel, big Rush fans. Uh, that's another thing. I have yet to see the movie. I love you, man. I know that Rush. I haven't either. No, I, I, I really need to. But. Um, this, if for those of you who haven't seen it, it's it documents what would be the final Rush tour, and it's a tour that almost didn't happen because uh, Neil was he was completely satisfied with the Clockwork Angels tour. It was the they, they did something they'd never done before. They did a show with an orchestra, and he just he felt they played well every night. He was ready to hang it up, and the only reason that uh, they didn't is because Alex had expressed interest in doing one more tour and. It's a very funny response Neil has to that, but um, it um, it's very bittersweet because you can kind of tell that Getty is not happy with the decision. He wanted to keep going, and it's very sad because it's uh, it's you get the feeling that Neil knew that he wasn't well, and he wanted to get as much you know family time yeah. as he could. And uh, but it's a good chronicle of how the tour progressed and um we you've had uh, jillian from um from rush gone on before no uh, we haven't had her on oh yeah yet. oh no no no, I, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry i'm talking i'm the rush cast that's jerry yes and, something uh, for nothing i've had yeah. her on yep. I, yep i i met her uh when i saw them in uh, 2004 um because we me and my friend matt we were late getting there we didn't even know rush gone was happening i don't know why we didn't but we were there for the show and uh so we were late getting started on the rush gun but she she was so good to us she's like here take this take that we're going here come along with us and you know yeah. it was just great so it was interesting to see her perspective and and uh how emotional that final evening was in la and um and of course they close it out with the garden which is you know like wow and yeah. for some reason okay and it's not a complaint because i'm glad they threw it on there but why did they throw the Presto tour footage on this? Why did or why didn't they? Why did they? Why is there extra footage well, from of all tours, the Presto tour? <laughs> well, I mean, the Presto tour and the Roll of Bones tour and the count. I mean, those tours, the Counterparts tour. I mean, I know the Counterparts tour, there's footage from it, but it was never released. Like, I would rather see a full length, you know, um, concert from each of those tours. Like, it would be yeah, cool. Yeah, that's true. Could, but uh, I mean, it's cool. I just think that's kind of odd. They just kind of had this kicking around. They thought they'd throw it on the disc. <laughs> yeah, that I don't know. I mean, it is. It, it, I will say one thing that, you know, the front of the front image is the only time or the supposedly the only time Neil yeah. ever crossed the the uh, to the other we, side. You know, the, the line the back there. line median. Yeah, they called he called it something. But the first time he ever came out center, st uh, center stage and. Um, Surprise, Getty. Getty turns around. He's like, oh. yeah, he's like, yeah. oh, okay. like, okay. And then like, Neil's yeah. a pretty predictable guy. So when he did that, and, and <laughs> yeah, if no one, if you didn't know by then, that was like, he's done. Right. And it's just so sad because now I haven't watched this in a while either because it made me so sad. But um, it's just so sad to think about because, you know, Neil wanted to retire. It's been pretty well documented that, like you said, after Clockwork Angels, it, you know, he pretty much wanted to be done and spend time with his young daughter and all that. Um, we learned after his passing that he was diagnosed with the brain cancer just in 2000 and I think 16. Right. So they he was only technically retired, quietly retired for 
a year before he got hit with the brain cancer. And yeah. like, that's just so sad to me. You know, he, for everything that, that he and the band have given us, you know, and, and people are still, you know, I run rush fans on Instagram. We get comments all the time of people saying, Oh, well, this was, you know, after our 40 in 2015, 2016, well, when's a band going to tour again? When's the next show? Like, like, I really want to see them again. And I'm just thinking to myself, I'm, you know, just let them be. They ended so perfectly. I mean, yeah. the, in terms of the garden being their final song in the studio and, yeah. you know, ending with the R40 tour going back in time and ending with, with this after the fact, um, you know, if they put out more material, I mean, you know, I know I'm talking about cinema Strangiato, which is in movie theaters this week. Um, but if, if they put out anything else, I mean, that's cool. But I think the way they ended is, is perfect. I, I know, Alex is working on new music coming up soon and all that. And I just, I'll listen to it, but I'm not like, I'm just perfectly happy and content with the way rush ended. And, you know, only it's being what I'd say to people, 2007, but what, I, what I'd say to people about that is like, you know, if you think about it, we might not have had anything past test for echo. It's true. You know what I mean? So we, there would have been no vapor trails, no snakes and arrows, no clockwork angels and all that great live stuff and the movie and, you know, that we got a great second act of quality rush material that we might not have had. And I remember thinking like you know, everything that comes out now is a bonus. Anything yeah, exactly. new that comes out now is a bonus. So, and I think that's why I've gone back and been listening to Clockwork Angels so much because it's like, this is all we're going to get. You better, you know, like take it in, absorb it. Um, although it would be cool to see more, archi you know, archival stuff come out. Um, I, I love the fact that they, um, and I don't have it, but on the, uh, one of the deluxe editions of 2112, they've got that black and white live footage from Passaic, oh, New yeah. Jersey. Yeah. I remember seeing that on YouTube with a watermark in the middle of it and thinking, boy, it'd be great if somebody could get rid of that. Well, somehow they did. I mean, how cool would it have been if they'd have filmed at Massey Hall so that we could have had all the world's a stage on Blu-ray? Yeah. Or that a show from that era like it would be really great to have you know i i i would love to see uh i've said this about kiss too i would love to see a dvd or blu-ray of just their videos all of them in one place remastered you know sync it up with the the most recent remastered versions of the audio and get it as clean as you can and just mm -hmm. put it all out but something like I was going to say something like counterparts live that was recorded and then scrapped, I guess, due to audio issues. Like there was supposed to be a DVD for that. Maybe it's different stages that I'm thinking of, but there is like, there is videos out there of them doing like double agent and cold yeah. fire live from the counterparts tour. And I think 94 and there's videos of uh, like songs like virtuality and time and motion being done on the test for echo tour that they're on YouTube. They're just not on DVDs. I don't think um, somehow someone got access to them and they're, and they're like, they're shot. Like they were going to be on a DVD too. Oh, so yeah, it's they not just, like just home video. They footage. were just somebody in the audience. Shooting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're actual, it's actual yeah. high quality I, stuff. And I'm hopeful that comes out sometime at some, maybe actually, I think the test for echo stuff did come out on like a bonus for something, but, not the counterpart stuff. I'm pretty think. sure that the, the, the last show they did in Toronto on the Test for Echo tour in 97 was shot. Because that was supposed to be their first DVD. But Actually, uh, no, I know it's on something. The virtuality and uh, I think time, I, it's on something someplace. But uh, this is the last thing I have. I don't know if it's even worth mentioning, but. Oh, yeah, I don't. I've got the CD to that. That's 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 an interesting the working men compilation. It's just live clips from various. Um, I, yeah, I bought the CD. Um, you know, I remember after Neil died, it was sort of like retail therapy. I'm like, well, what don't I have yet? You know, um, and yeah, that's cool, too. I mean, it's got. I mean, yeah, you can't go wrong with the songs that are on there. This is a good pl I haven't I don't even know if I've ever watched this. It's probably just that I bought because okay, rush, cool, I don't have this. Um but I mean if you're a new fan and you're looking for, you know, I assume you probably have some unfamiliar rush fans on your channel. If you're a new fan and you're looking for some new rush to get into or, or excuse me, if you're looking for some live rush stuff to get into, probably start here because these have a lot of the hits. Yeah. You know, Limelight, Spirit of Radio, Free Will, 
subdivisions, Tom Sawyer, Working Man, YYZ, close to the heart. Um, and it's got a few deeper cuts, Far Cry, One Little Victory, Dreamline. Um, you know, if you're looking for some live stuff to, to start off, this would probably be a good yeah. place. And that was a smart way for the record company to do that because they did put a lot of songs that the average person would pick up and recognize. By time. Yeah, right. So, so Ryan, I'm going to give you the floor here uh, as we wrap up. Um, you know, most of us watching this know about Rush fans, but maybe not everybody does. Tell us about uh, the Rush fans Instagram page and how it's grown. Yeah, so the Rush fans Instagram, that's that's where the Rush fans community started was on Instagram. In 2013, on the Clockwork Angels tour, the band themselves didn't even have an Instagram account. So I took it upon myself to make an Instagram account, called it Rush fans. People thought I was the band for a while, which was kind of weird. Um, I'm like, no, 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 I'm not the band. I'm just a, a guy sharing concert photos. That's how it originated. It was originated uh, with me just sharing concert photos from my own personal experiences because I figured my friends and family were sick of seeing that on my own personal account. So I made a page to do it and then had people send photos in and shared them. Um, it's grown. I've got 15 people working for me. Um, <laughs> they, they like to think uh, of me as kind of like the leader of the page. I don't like to think of it like that, but uh, we got people doing various different things uh, as part of the uh, page. We've grown on Instagram to Rush Lyrics, another account uh, where we just post, you know, we create lyric images and just post the lyrical genius of the band. Um, we've expanded to Twitter and, of course, YouTube. Uh, I assume if you're watching Tim's Vinyl Confessions, you're watching this on YouTube. Check out Rush Fans, all one word. Um, various different series or playlists, if you will. We have, of course, our Rush Roundtable. Uh, you've appeared on plenty of those, Tim. Uh, that's once a week, every Friday, we post various different topics. Uh, we do song discussions, all sorts of fun stuff with that. Uh, our deep dive series, which Tim, you're a mainstay on with Donna Halper and then one rotating guest. We're going backwards in time like they did on R40, uh, deep diving into every album. Uh, we're each choosing a song, a deeper song, deeper cut song and uh, talking about it as a group. Um the Rush Root series where people were interviewing folks. They're telling us how they got into the band. Uh, that's a really cool series. Those are, those are really short episodes. Um, and then our Stick It Out series where four, four uh, Rush fans, myself included, um, we each chose eight Rush songs that we weren't really a fan of or never got into. And we stick it out. Uh, one song per episode, basically forcing ourselves to listen to that song as many times as we can in hopes that it grows on us. Uh, so that's a, that's a fun series. That's, you know, we try to make you laugh a little bit um, with our dry humor. So, yeah, I mean, and it's growing. We got more ideas in the pipeline, so stay tuned. But, um, yes, uh, if you're a Rush fan and you want to talk Rush, Rush Roundtable, please shoot us an email rush fans instagram at gmail.com or just shoot us a dm on instagram at rush fans uh and let's talk some rush well you know it's it's open the pipeline is open we want new people to come in and talk rush because we're coming up on 100 episodes and you know we've got a whole bunch more planned so that's everything rush fans related it's it's a lot of fun and there's nothing any cooler than when i see the official rush instagram page repost something from rush fans i mean that's how you know you've made it. Did, did, and am I wrong about this? Did Getty actually repost something once on his on, on his Getty uh, images? Account? Oh yeah, he's he's reposted a couple things. He, yeah, he team he sends tends to uh, repost. You know, he tends to come on once or twice a week on Instagram and, and reshare things of, of folks that are tagging him and stuff. Um, but yeah, the the official Rush Instagram account follows us too, so that's, that's pretty. That's pretty sweet. That was a seal that, of approval. Yeah, that was the moment that I realized like we're doing something right here and we we try to keep everything, you know, as organized and as professional as possible just to keep the rush community alive. You know, the band's not touring anymore. We're getting limited content and uh hopefully we get a moving pictures 40th anniversary coming up, maybe. Yeah, we're overdue for that. <laughs> yeah, uh we are. Hopefully yeah. we get something, but um so far we've just gotten a t-shirt. I think, but um, yeah, it's, it's so much fun. It consumes a lot of my time. My wife hates it, but uh, 
you know, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So Sacrifice. yeah, uh, exactly. So. so Ryan, thank you so much for coming on doing this episode. I've really enjoyed going through the, the videos. It makes me want to watch them all again, which will take yes. up a long time, but um <laughs> Uh, what your do wife you guys out there think? Like, what what are your favorite Rush home videos? What would you like to see uh, come out that you think might be there? They might be able to clean up and put out, like Ryan mentioned, the counterparts footage. So, um, thanks, Ryan, for for coming on, and guys, and like you said, check out Rush fans. Start with Instagram, take it from there. Uh, I've met so many cool people on here, yourself included. Uh, Rush fans from all walks of life, varying age groups, very very young people to people my age, a little bit older. We're all here for the same reason that we love this band. So uh, thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of Tim's Vinyl Confessions. Thank you, Tim. I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>